What's up guys, it's your boy Andy here on Algopedia and in this video we are going to talk about six super valuable lessons that I've learned during my journey in software engineering and especially now during my internship with Amazon. These are some lessons that every intern and junior software engineer out there should know in order to maximize his skills and his career. So let's get started. Lesson number one, once you start, meet the team. The first and most obvious thing for that is that you are a social being, so act like one. Don't worry too much about technical stuff and details in the first week, but be very specific on meeting everyone in the team. This is going to bring you the most value in the long run. Of course, during these times, unfortunately, it's harder to shake their hand or meet them in person, but you can drop them a message, you can schedule some video calls with them, and very important, on the first ever team meetings, make sure you introduce yourself and let everybody know that you want to meet them. So for example, hey, what's up? I'm Andy, I'm the new intern, and I'm very excited to meet you all. So I'm going to drop your message and maybe we find an appropriate time for each other and we will have a call. Awesome, done. By doing this, you are going to meet a lot of amazing people, each of them specialized in their own area, which is amazing because you need to learn a lot of different things from a lot of different people. But the best part of this, because we as interns and juniors are very dependent on other people, so we need to ask for help for many times. By meeting everyone in the team, you considerably increase your chances of finding somebody which will be available to help you. Isn't this awesome? Second lesson, there is no such thing as a stupid question. Again, no such thing as a stupid question. Question. Trust me, in these two months of being an intern for Amazon, I have asked everything that you could ask. Either technical, administrative, how to write a message, how to write an email, how to tie my shoe, uh, not, not that, not that. Now, asking all these questions, did I think that some of them were stupid? Definitely. I was very afraid to ask a lot of questions because I was thinking, what if the question is stupid? What if I waste the person's time? What if the answer is right there, very obvious in front of my eyes, and I don't see it? But they weren't stupid. No question was stupid. And you know why? Because on stupid questions, you get a predictable response. But I didn't. There was always some small detail, some small thing that I've never thought about. And I've learned it by asking the question. This is super important. You don't want to ask the busiest or maybe the most talented guy in the office, which probably has time to answer one question a month for you. You don't want to ask him how to write an email. Or you don't want to ask maybe an HR person about how to write code, right? So make sure you choose the best people if you can and they are available to answer each question. Now, there is no such thing like a stupid question, but of course, there are some bad practices that you should avoid. For example, asking a question without even thinking about how to solve it yourself. Guilty. I did that. Because when you know you have so many awesome people that are there to help you, you might get too excited and start asking questions right away without thinking about them. This is not good in the long run for your learning experience, trust me, not good at all. You don't learn until you struggle to unblock yourself each time. In the beginning, it is very good to ask questions, but at some point you don't learn until you struggle to solve those problems yourself. Because if you don't, you will always be dependent on some other people and no company wants that. If they wanted somebody who is always dependent on some other people's instructions, they would have hired the robot. Lesson number three, don't spend too much time on trying to figure out things on your own. In the beginning, when you just joined the team, especially if you're an intern or a junior, you want to be independent. You want to show how valuable you are. You want to show how smart you are. You want to show how, stop. No, don't waste too much time on trying to solve everything by your own because this is nature, not everything has an answer, and you are not supposed to know everything. It doesn't matter how much experience you have, it doesn't matter if you have built rockets with Elon Musk, or if you can shoot three pointers with your eyes closed, you will always have something new to learn. And there are always things that you don't know, especially when being an intern or a junior who just joined the team. And I think one of the most important skills that a newcomer should have is figuring out the optimal way to unblock himself. With experience, you will find the right balance of learning as much as you can from struggling with problems and struggling to unblock yourself, and also not wasting too much time because you probably have deadlines to meet, don't you? Now, this might sound easy, but it's very hard. It's been two months since I'm on internet Amazon and I still haven't found the right balance. But what I would do if I was to go back in time at the beginning of my internship is ask for more valuable help. 
And let me tell you what valuable really means. By valuable, I mean non-shallow time with somebody on your team, which is going to help you not only solve this problem, this blocker, but all the blockers related to this one. For example, pair programming are really awesome opportunities to learn a lot of things or diving deeper into some topics. So, for example, I have a question. I can get the answer right away by a message or something like that. But if I dive deeper into the topic, so I spend one more hour into the topic and I really understand what's there, I will save the time of asking nine more stupid questions about the same topic and I can do it now. Isn't this awesome? Lesson number four, be specific with every little detail and test a lot before submitting code. This is a lesson that I had to learn the hard way because I've submitted the code without testing, without checking the details and guess what? I received back that code and every code that I've written afterwards, which depended on that foundation code was useless. And this is how I have not met my first deadline and I've learned this lesson. There is no such thing as perfectly written code from the start. We all make mistakes. We all do errors. It's human. This is why you have to really focus on the boring testing part and checking each detail, even if it's not fun, even if it doesn't show how uh, quick you are, how quick you solve the task, trust me, really valuable in the long run because you don't want to get sent thousands of lines of code back to you, maybe not thousands, but hundreds, even hundreds. There are some weeks of work getting sent back because you have a bug and you have to change the foundation code. And based on the foundation code, you will change your approach and each line of code is useless. So test a lot and be careful at details. Lesson number five, it's not the end of the world if you don't meet a deadline. Trust me, it's not. But you know when it is the end of the world? When you don't meet a deadline and you don't communicate it. So this lesson is about communication. Nobody is perfect, but it's okay. Mistakes are something that is part of us. That's cool. But you know what is not cool? Not communicating. By being organized, and always having a good communication with your manager or with the team, they will always have a good idea about where are you in terms of your work, how much will it take to finish the work, and you will have more time, you won't be that stressed, you won't feel that pressure, oh, I have two more days and I know this is going to be late, everybody's going to hate me. No, by communicating, you know, I have a week, I'm going to do it perfectly, nobody hates me, all the people understand me and you get rid of all the useless stress and mistakes that you are going to make because they are a result of stress also, right? So not the end of the world if you don't meet a deadline, but communicate it. Not the end of the world if you make a mistake, but communicate it. Always communication is key because all the people, trust me, all the people are going to understand you. There is no one who is going to be like, oh, you're going to be fired. You don't belong here because you don't meet this deadline. No. Everybody's going to be understanding, but all you have to do is be responsible of communicating every problem and blocker that you have. And lesson number six, learn from seniors. Seniors are very valuable people who are there for way longer than you are, and they know a lot of things. Some of them probably know perfectly or have written or have thought about the architecture of the app that you are working on. So this is very important. If you want to have a great career in the long run, and be a valuable member in the long run, you will see that you are going to go from like small tasks and small details to maybe making more important decisions, right? Because that's what seniors do. So if you want to always be an intern or a junior, maybe you don't need this step. But if you want to step your game up and literally become a very important member of the team, you need to start learning and working along seniors. When a senior says something, Maybe about the database, about the architecture, about the um, some other thing that you are going to need in the future. Even if you don't need it now in the present, take notes and be very careful, right? Because seniors are mentors, which you get for free because you are in the team and you get to learn lots and lots of things for them. From architecture and things technical related to even life advice, and maybe they are going to tell you how to pass your next interviews and how to, I don't know, feed your babies and stuff like that. So they are amazing people. 
take them as mentors and make the most out of it. Okay, guys, this was Andy. These were my six lessons that you should apply from tomorrow in order to become a valuable team member and step your game and career up. Thanks for the attention. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. It's a party. Join the party. Like this video and go to Elgo Academy and start practice to get that job so that you can apply these six lessons. In order to do that, you first need the job, right? Go to Elgo Academy, make a free account. We have 15 free tutorials just for you and start practicing. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.